Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I would like to impart these words of wisdom to you this morning. Number one, when everything's coming your way, you're in the wrong lane. And if at first you don't succeed, then skydiving is not for you. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on a Tuesday. Good morning, good morning. Oh, there's that lovely voice of Kate Smith, and God bless America. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call Get on the Route Service today at 734-6969. Right now, without further ado, let's go over and find out who is is our Pledge of Allegiance person. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Rotten, how are you? I'm rottener than rotten and rotten. All right, buddy, give us the pledge, please. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, so well done, my friend. God bless you and your lovely wife, and we'll see you Thursday at Lunch Bunch. We're planning on being there. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Right now, it's time for the weather, and the weather is brought to you by some dear friends of ours. Wow. I mean, they've got everything for your home. Whether it's uh, carpet and flooring, or whether you want to do the kitchen over, kitchen construction, or home decor items, whatever you need to make your house a home. Cheney Flooring and Home Design at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. Or give them a call at six seven eight six nine four five. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Here's your weather forecast for this Tuesday, January nineteenth, and we are expecting some rain showers for today, especially this afternoon. It's going to be a little bit on the windy side out of the southeast, right around 11 miles an hour today, a high of 38. Now, the rain showers this afternoon could turn into snow showers in the evening and overnight hours with a low near 33. Tomorrow, winds picking up to about 20 miles an hour, high of 36 with an overnight low of 20. Mostly sunny and 40 for Thursday and cloudy and 42 for Friday. Yesterday's high was 41 and the overnight low was 27. That's your weather for 7th Ram. Very well done as always. Gina, thank you with the weather and brought to you this hour by Cheney Flooring and Home Design. You want that unique touch to your home? I mean, something really special, something that says you, you get a hold of them today. Wonderful people that know whatever you need to make your house a home. Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. Oh, by the way, don't forget Thursday is sale day. Better believe it. Thursday is sale day at 1030 at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. And the number to call for consignment information or sale information, 678-9411. Merv May, Cade, Roggy, and Lance Udy, the sale that works for you. Burley Livestock Sale Yard sale coming up this Thursday at 1030. Don't you miss it. I have been hitting this for the last couple of weeks, and I want to do it again today. 
Uh, the American Legion Post 82 and American Legion Auxiliary 82 in Eden hosting a spaghetti dinner fundraiser for the Jim Coleman family. Very, very sad story. They lost their home in a fire, and they lost everything. And the uh, dinner's going to be held this coming Saturday, January 23rd, from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Snug Bar and Grill in Eden. And the cost is $10, with 100% of the proceeds going to the Coleman's. And there's also going to be a silent auction and live music with Gina Jones starting at 7 p.m. And if you want an update on what the family needs, you know, for clothing and furniture and cash donations, go to the City of Hazleton Facebook page and they'll have an update. Let's not forget, too, our friends at Daryl's Cleaners. Yes, I was there yesterday. Yes, we went in and picked up my clothes. And yes, they all look brand spanking new. All your clothes will. Anything you want dry cleaned right there at Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. They are the best. And that's not brag. That's a fact. Absolutely the best of all. Kevin and Cindy at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Daryl's Cleaners. You stop in and see them today. By the way, too, don't forget our friends at SafeLink Internet and 18 years and counting as Idaho's number one choice for wireless internet services. No no contract options, bit my tongue. No credit checks, unlimited data. They are there to serve you and serve they will. Call them at 677-8000. SafeLink Internet, 677-8000. Well, here we go this morning. If you are a neighbor to a person that all of a sudden in the middle of the night is gone, kidnapped, can't find him, in the middle of the night, what would you do to help? Naturally, we'd all, if we had any decency about us, we drop everything, everything, and assist in any way we could to find him and get that neighbor back home to his family and his loved ones. Do anything possible. Well, it's not so with the Obama administration. Some of the hostages, let me underline that again, some of the hostages are coming home, including our own Boise Pastor Abedini. We'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. But Bob Levinson, an American citizen that was over there working as a contractor, is still there. With all the many years in captivity, and he's not coming home. It was never approached, as I understand it, to get him home. And when they were asked, they being Iran... They made the statement to our State Department and our government, hmm, we don't know where he is. That's chilling. When you have a corrupt, killing state like Iran, and when you ask for where one of our American citizens is, and they say they don't know where he is, Cold thoughts went up my back, and I thought, oh, my goodness, that man is dead. And they're just covering up. I, honestly, I I saw the family. I saw one of the sons, and I saw the wife on television last night, and my heart honestly just broke for them. The complete haggard look on the wife's face for all the years, all the months, all the pain and the suffering of worrying and wondering where her husband is. And now the joy of some of our hostages coming back home, but he's not one of them. That, that just has to be another punch to the gut. Now, I'd like your feelings on this this morning. My response would have been, and I know I'm kind of a redneck, but uh, my response would be, to the Iranian government, you find him now, not five minutes from now, now. And in one hour, 
have that man headed to an American embassy, or we're locking up everything. We are going to lock up everything you need to survive as a country. We're going to close down all the shipping, close the Straits of Hormuz, not let any oil ships go, not let any food ships in. No money to your den of vipers ever. We're going to send in 5,000 troops to verify and dismantle any nuclear facilities you have. We're going to be the grizzly that we should have been all along. Insist, demand, and do. Bob Levinson's family has lost all hope in this government. And quite frankly, so have I. Give me your thoughts. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Don't forget our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. You know, right now, the forecast for more snow, more cold. Winter's just hitting us, boys and girls. And we better make sure those furnaces are going to run efficiently and turn out the heat you need. You better stop in and get some air filters. I'll tell you what, you can buy them in a case of 12 and save money at Ramsey Heating and Electric. For all your heating and electric needs, they are the best. Stop in and see them today. Open 730 to 5, Monday through Friday at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Come on, give me a call. Hurry, 436-2244. Be the first one to call. Actually, the second Dale, Dale called in with our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, be right with you. Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. We are going to be there in two days. Yep, day after tomorrow for our January Lunch Bunch, the first one of 2016 at Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. And they've got another great location at 291. One pole line in Twin Falls. Oh, America's Diner. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, anytime, all the time. Great food, great service at Denny's. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, everybody, for being such a great host at Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. Caller, good morning and thank you. Good morning, Jeff. Boy, that last advertisement's making me hungry. I've been up for a little that, bit yet. That's the whole nature of the ad, by the way, Riley, to make you hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're, uh, I don't think I'd give them much time at all. I might give them, a, give them a courtesy call and say, you know, we have some some of the fighters headed your way, followed by a couple B-52s. That if I felt like it and being nice that day. Then they'd get the hint after they got a little bit of shock and awe and say, now where's our guy? And yeah. I wouldn't stop. Yeah, well, you know, I Riley. I stop until he comes. And it, call, me, call me a little radical. Call me a little bit over the top. But you know what? I ain't done dealing with them, them kind of people. I really am. Um, America should be done dealing with that kind of a country personality that is acting upon thuggery. They're punks. They're mafiosos. They're absolutely the vermin of the earth. And to and it's, not, it's not just for Iran either. It's for all them countries. This even goes, my opinion, is the small uh, pirates that that uh, kidnap ships and, and people off the freighters off the side of out in the ocean. Yeah, they yeah. treat them like they used to treat the old. Uh, the old uh, pirates back in the day, hanging from the yard arm. You know, that gets the point across real quick and in a hurry. When you see the American flag on a ship, boy, you better turn around and start to run. Because, by golly, we're coming, and hell's going to come with us. Absolutely. i tell you, it's like I said earlier, be the grizzly that we should have been all along. And I appreciate it, Riley. God bless you, man. Thanks. You too. Thank Bye. you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. What are your thoughts about our foreign policy, if you will? Well, you know, Zeb, I'm about half scared to death. They're just going to start stacking up the people that they kidnap and put false charges against because they can see a whole bunch of money coming in for each one of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good way of making a lot of money real fast. I think we set ourselves up for some real jeopardy. Well, wait a minute, Jerry, I'll tell you something. What you said is 100% correct and even more so. Number one, I said yesterday, and I'm going to maintain this, that what is being set up right now is a, a non-changeable fact that all Americans are going to have a target on their back no matter where they go. I believe right now is going to be open season on all Americans for ransom and for treasure and 
and for the release of any and all prisoners that are bad guys and killers. I think what's happened is they've opened the floodgates, and I don't think we can stop it. Well, you know, the big problem there is we're getting one person back, and they're getting seven or eight or yeah. four or five or three or four. Yeah. And it's not even our people aren't killing people. They aren't doing well. I won't say they aren't killing people because I don't know. But, you know, they're not doing the heinous things that they are. Yeah. Let me ask you something. A country that is not our friend in any way, never has been, and probably never will be, to me, it's just insane. Let me ask you we something. We're treating with hard hands. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry, just a minute. Give me. One of our people, we need to go get them, and we need to make them pay big time. For everyone they take. Absolutely. I totally agree. We have got to start being the junkyard dog. And uh, right now we're a toothless old hound laying on the back porch. Well, I don't think you are. I think you said, Bill, the... One of the best people I know. Well, well, no, you missed my point. If I'm being that. I'm going to get out of your way. All right, Jerry. I'm headed for that big city up where Russell's at. Well, God bless you. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you for your call, Jerry. I'll probably give you a report on him at lunch bunch or whenever I can catch up with you. All right, sir. Thank you much. God bless. You bet. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. You know, I, what I meant was, you know, we, we should be the junkyard dog over these situations. The liberal mindset in this country is just driving me nuts. Deanna and I sat and talked about this long, long last night watching the news. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, no, you might offend somebody. Oh, no, you might do this and it might create chaos and, oh, my, might start a war. Oh, no, you can't do that. Well, you better just sit there and accept this and accept that fact. Do you really want to live like that? You know, where is the pride in America? Where is the security of looking up to that red, white, and blue flag on that flagpole and knowing that that flag represents the best of people and the best of anything or everything from any country ever in the world's history? Now, sitting over in Iran someplace, and God forbid the man is dead. I certainly hope he's still alive, and that's Mr. Levinson. Sitting over in that country is a man that is probably so forlorn and so absolutely destitute of hope, he's probably given up. He probably just accepts the trashy food that they feed him. He probably accepts the cold, stark reality that he's going to die in a little 8 by 10 prison cell. Where's his country? Where's his president and where's the leadership to go get that man out? Did he do anything wrong? No, he's a hostage. He is a hostage. And John Kerry, I despise that man. Some of his absolutely stupid and frivolous comments that he made are not indicative of a man that should be Secretary of State or anywhere high in the elevated positions of our nation's government. Absolutely a despicable person. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Now, I went in yesterday. Yes, some people called and said, give us a report. Well, I can tell you this. I should have done it a long time ago. I'll tell you what, Nick Greenwell, physical therapist, and all the physical therapists there, they know their business. And Nick had a very comprehensive plan for me as far as getting things organized on my new fitness program for my hip. Oh, boy. 
We went through the gamut. And yours truly is sitting very, very stiffly on the chair this morning, but boy, it helps. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Don't forget they are the best. All the medicine, all the exercises, everything for you. Call for an appointment at 678-1191, helping you get back to being you. Also, I want to remind you real quick, I've got a, I don't know why you're standing there like Lurch from the Adams family, but uh, what, what, what do you want, George? What? Speak up. Oh, you okay, hold on. I'll do a commercial and then I'll let you talk on the air. You know, you can't give hand signals when I'm on the air. you got to hear you. Don't forget our friends at Barry Equipment and Rental. Three locations, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, South Lincoln and Jerome, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. And, oh, my, oh, my, they're turning around a lot of their equipment to cycle out a bunch of the rental fleet, and they've got them for sale. And you, you can save money on the equipment that you need. Whether it's Coyote tractors, whether it's Bobcat equipment, oh my, and great financing options available too. I wouldn't wait. I'd get in the old pick em up truck and get over there and give them a call today. And that's, of course, Barry Equipment and Rental. Three locations, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, South Lincoln in Jerome, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Really good folks. George Mass, what are you doing over here? Pull that microphone up real close. How come you're coming in and barging in on my program this morning? Morning. Well, uh, I got a uh, gift for Deanne for her birthday. I had it to so I thought I'd better drop it well, off. Well, wait a minute. You're embarrassing me here. Her birthday is not for uh, one, two, three, four weeks. I know it, but I might forget, and I'd be in trouble. I wouldn't get no more goodies. You'd be in trouble? <laughs> Holy smokes, you're not even a distant relative. I'm the one that's going to be in hot water. Know, but then it's also kind of a reminder for you to remember. I'm writing it down. All right, sir. <laughs> so you're over here to give her a birthday present. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. May I ask what it is? I mean... A set of fleece sheets. Fleece? Yes. Like in... Bah. Yep. They are... They're really great, especially oh. for the cold nights. Oh. Anyway, I'm just headed to Twin do some blood work, so... Oh. Drop them off. Well, how come you look so good this morning? I mean, man, what did you do to yourself? It's a different George. It's a new year. I turned over a new leaf. You turned over the whole tree. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> hey, quick question. Seriously. Talking about this subject, George, and you being a veteran from the Navy, and I, I think you would speak on behalf of a lot of veterans. What's happened to the pride in America and the pride that we're not going to be bitten, snipped at by a bunch of these smaller three-bit countries, and now Iran holding back still more hostages and basically just shining the sun? It uh, is sliding backwards big time. The uh, It has been for several years. The last eight years, really bad, or seven years, really bad. But uh, that deal, you know, where they're trading those uh, our people for the yeah. criminals that yeah. we traded, yeah. they said a good president because... Uh, they kidnapped a bunch in Iraq yeah. over the weekend. This is what I said earlier just a few moments ago. I said that the target is now on every American's back, regardless of whether it's in the Middle East or wherever it is. Now that somebody knows that for a ransom or a trade of positions, as far as someone that we've locked up as being a bad guy, basically get the Americans. They'll they'll do whatever we want. It is. And, you know, you can take any country. If we was on the other side of the fence... Boy, if you want to get rich, just kidnap a bunch of people, no matter what country they're from, and yeah. you'll, you'll get rewarded. I'm really afraid of what's going on, and uh, this administration is not showing anything as far as, like I mentioned a minute ago, being the grizzly that we should have been a long time ago. No, we've been barking a no bite. We just need to reverse that. Uh, you know, the old saying, kick butt and take names. That's, uh, we need to do that. Well, let me tell you something. I wish you good luck this morning. Uh, Godspeed, and I'll say thank you on behalf of my wife and myself, especially me, for reminding me of my wife's birthday that's coming up. I even know the date. i got it memorized. <laughs> February 18th. Yeah, well, she just remembered. I'll, I'll give you a head, heads up call about a week before. I've got six calendars. Seriously, I keep a calendar in my pickup. I keep a calendar in my car. I keep two or three here. i got one on this desk. And believe me, they've all got red X's on them for February 18th. I'm not going to forget, George. I know, but have a good day, my dear. But uh, you gonna My able, dear? Are you going to be able to find them? That's the question. <laughs> Zeb, have a good day. God bless you, George. Thank you so much.
so much. One of my dearest friends, George Mass, dropping by. Thank you very much. Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. By the way, don't forget Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Yes, you need to hear what you may be missing. You know what? Uh, hearing loss is not associated with age, getting older. No, it's not. That's a misnomer. You might be having trouble with some medication. You might be having some health problems, whatever it might be, high blood pressure. You'd better have it checked out with a hearing screening today at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And the number to call for an appointment, 312-0957. Right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. All right, it's your turn. Give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. On this program, and I want to say this, and I really would appreciate I've got a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends. I have friends that you can depend on. I have friends that in the time of need, they are here. George Mass, one of those, and his lovely wife, Donna, uh, very indicative of what I just said. I am blessed. I might not be able to take my Wranglers off and shake the pockets out and find a whole bunch of money, but I am blessed with the best of friendships. And the reason I'm saying that is I'm not on this program to win popularity contests. And I'm not going to be on this program to be chosen Magic Valley's best neighbor or whatever it is. I'm here on this program to tell the truth and also give my opinion of the truth as to what's going on. And I don't feel like there's enough of that on the radio today. Most people go along to get along. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Or take a liberal mindset that's absolutely stupid. What's going on in New York with the NYPD is indicative of what I'm just trying to talk about this morning. Because I don't care about being liked by the Times News. I don't care about being liked by any television station or anybody else in the media. I'm going to tell it like it is. The New York Police Department is settling a Muslim surveillance lawsuit. And under the agreement, the agency must strengthen oversight of its surveillance practices, including a civilian attorney attorney to monitor. What does that mean? Well, now, care... The Council on Arab and uh, is American and Islamic Relations and others with the ACLU have said, Oh, no, you can't be watching the Muslims. You can't be investigating the mosque. You can't do this. You can't have different surveillance procedures. No. Why? Why, that's profiling. So the New York Police Department must strengthen, these are key words right here, must strengthen oversight of its surveillance practices as a part of a settlement of two civil rights lawsuits accusing the police force of unfairly monitoring Muslims after 9-1-1. So in other words, we're catering to the Muslims again. Yeah, we are. We're catering to the Muslims again. And now they have to have independent attorneys working with the police force in New York, and now it's going to spread elsewhere, to monitor surveillance and make sure that they're not just profiling. This is going to inhibit, this is going to prohibit, Knowledge that we might need for people to stay alive. The long running controversy, it said here in this Wall Street Journal report, the long running controversy illustrates the tension between law enforcement agencies that say they must take steps to remain vigilant in an age of global terrorism 
and civil rights and other groups that say civil liberties shouldn't be violated in the name of security. It's a no-win situation for our safety. I've said this before on the air, and I'll say it again. It's not a bunch of Presbyterians, Mormons, Lutherans, or Catholics that are causing the problem. And if we have to check into illicit doings at a mosque, we'd better do it. Here's what Heine Shamsi of the American Civil Liberties Union said. We hope the NYPD's reforms help make clear that effective policing can and must be achieved without unconstitutional religious profiling of Muslims or any other communities. I wonder, and call me on this please, maybe if they would have done more profiling in San Bernardino, Maybe if they would have checked on some of what was going on at the mosque that the male killer went to, they'd have found out a whole lot more about his background. They'd have found out a whole lot more about the female uh, basically impersonating his wife. And maybe lives could have been saved. Oh, but no, 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 no. Why, we can't have any profiling. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Jeff. You hit on something that is kind of makes me irate. The Mormons was kicked out of several different settlements back years and hundreds of years ago when they first started their church. And they they was profiled everywhere they went until they got to the Salt Lake and they finally was left alone. But now why all of a sudden that we can't profile the Muslims, the people that are trying to kill us, the Mormons just wanted to have freedoms of religion like the, the Constitution said that they could have. But all of a sudden, like, now... The Muslims can have all the freedoms that they want, but yet they want to kill us. Well, what's the difference there? Well, let, let, me, let me ask you. Question? Let me ask you a couple of questions, and I'll respond. And I think our answers will come up with the answer. Okay? Uh, right. Who killed Bobby Kennedy back in 1968? A Muslim, right? Well, you don't have to give me the name, but it was a Muslim male, was it not? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. And in 1972 at the Munich Olympics, who killed the Israeli athletes? They were what? Muslim. Oh, gee. Now we have a trend here somehow. Uh, in 1979, the U.S. Embassy in Iran was taken over by whom? Oh, okay. Now, skipping ahead to 1993, the World Trade Center for the first time was bombed by whom? Muslim. Oh, you're doing well. And then who came in on 911 and brought down the Twin Towers? The Muslims. Oh, well, see, now we've developed a, tra a little bit of a trade route here. Uh, evidently, they should be watched. Uh, not one time did I hear you say Mormons, Presbyterians, or Lutherans. No, no, not at all. And, and that, that's, that's my question. Why, why can't we profile why is it because we've got a Muslim president, or are they afraid of the Muslims that the Muslims will come and take over if they don't do something to to let them let them buy? What I am I'm, I'm getting so furious because you and me are being warned by Obama. We're being warned by the likes of uh, a very juvenile newspaper in Twin Falls called the Times News. We're being oh well, we can't profile. Oh well, we can't criticize. Let me tell you something, sir. We'd better start criticizing. We better start looking at things. We better start asking questions, or it's going to be too late. 
I agree with that, but it sounds like you get profiled every time you go into the airports. Your hat's been destroyed, your crutches are taken away from you. Uh, isn't that profiling there, Jeff? Yeah, I still can't imagine how dumb some of those TSA workers were, especially that one that I've talked about in St. Louis that told me to put my crutches on the conveyor belt and then walk through. That guy should not be working anywhere. Well, I... But then are the people that the government is hiring so that they can pull the wool over their eyes and, and they're the puppets because the government is, are the puppet masters. No, I'm... And, and, and people like you are, are seeing through that and no matter how loud you talk or how many hours you're on the air, people are still criticizing you there in the paper for what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, we... can't see what's going on. That's exactly right. They're blinded by political correctness and liberalism that has taken shades and put them over their eyes, put stuffing in their ears so they cannot see the evil, hear the evil, or when you don't understand what's going on, you can't speak about the evil. And I'm telling you right now that we had better have better surveillance. I want groups of people to prove to us that they are acceptable in our society. I certainly don't want to hear about more San Bernardinos. Well, uh, we got it right here in our backyard. The CSI Center over there. You know what's going to happen. They're going to infiltrate us over here, and then something's bound to happen over here just just to say, oh, we can do that. Well, it's... It may not be a mass shooting, but there's going to be a stabbing or, or something like that just to prove, prove their point. Well, Am I, I wrong on that, Zach? No, I pray, honestly, and I mean this seriously. My wife and I can uh, verify this. We actually pray and hope that all will be well. I am sick and tired of being called a hate monger. I'm sick and tired of being called a bigot. I call myself very cautionary under the circumstances of protection for me, my family, and my well-being, and my neighbors and my loved ones. Because right now we have an infiltration into this country that absolutely has the insidious and hateful thoughts of taking us, killing us, and getting rid of us and I don't want to take anything away if it's profiling fine let's find out who the bad guys are and go get them and let's not be so doggone chicken hearted in protecting our values in this country well I agree with you look what's happened to Glenn Beck he's he's a talk show host and he speaks his mind and he's got to have bodyguards wherever he goes yeah. he's got concealed weapons permits He's carrying, and I hope that you carry, Zeb. I really do, that you're able to do that just to protect yourself. But my question for you is, if Donald Trump gets put in, you were talking about political correctness. If Donald Trump gets put in as president, will that political correctness go away the way he talks, speak in his mind, or will they criticize him and belittle him until he changes his attitude? I tell you what, I'm going to answer that over the air because we got a little beep on the line, but I thank you very much for your call. God bless you, and I'll answer that right away. Thank you very much. I don't know. I, I don't think anybody, uh, there's a lot of talk show hosts, and I get a kick out of some of these guys that will sit, and women too, that will sit there and they act like they're the Encyclopedia Britannica and they know everything about what's going on and they think that they know every answer to every question. I don't know what would happen with political correctness underneath the leadership of a president like Donald Trump. I don't know. I don't think anybody can answer that. But I will say that the reflection and personality of a nation sometimes takes on the aura and the personality of the leadership like we had with Ronald Reagan. I felt very secure. I felt very optimistic. I felt very happy during the Reagan years because I think it reverts back to that word security I have not used any of those words under this administration I'm fearful I'm very concerned 
and I'm very wary. The gentleman said something during the course of the conversation about protecting ourselves. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was at a lunch the other day, and we were talking about this. And I have said this so many times on the air, and I mean it. The naivete of an area, and I believe there is a naive attitude in this area. Why? Because people think, well, we're in the Intermountain West, and, oh, we're pretty protected. We're isolated from the L.A.s, the Chicago's, the New York's, the Houston's, etc. No, we're not. The same problems can happen here, and we need to be very cognizant of what's going on. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. I think our big problem, one of our big problems, is that we're being attacked by so many different groups from right here in the United States. The BLM, EPA, uh, Black Lives Matter. No matter where you turn around, we've got somebody trying to attack some part of us or our government. Well, I'll agree with that, that we're under siege for what's right, what's wrong, what's black, what's white, what's decent, what's indecent. And we've lost our morality, we've lost our sense of values, we've lost a lot in this country because we've been dictated to by a liberal left that wants to take everything down off the wall that says right is right, right is or wrong is wrong, and they want to change it to like what the Bible said is going to happen, wrong will become right, and right will become wrong. And it's about high time we stood up and said no if it takes a little violent reaction if it takes an in, a little discourse with people in a not uncertain tone it's got to be done tony because this country is floundering well you know a lot of people feel that uh, Barack obama is better than uh donald trump but do you think this country can stand another four uh, four years of somebody like uh uh, Obama? No. Trump is better than anything we've got going so far. No, we can't take another. Uh, God forbid, and I mean that in all sense of uh, sincerity. God forbid that this country would be subjected to the likes of Hillary Clinton. I'll guarantee you that would be the end of America, our Constitution, and our value system, what's left of it, for all time. We wouldn't have the stars and stripes anymore. We would have the hammer and sickle flying over our country. Hillary is destitute of any personality characteristics that are good for this country. I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, the only thing with the her, she should be charged with treason and put in prison. I'd just like to have her be charged. I don't care what it is, even for a speeding ticket violation. Let's get her indicted and let's get her off the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think right now the police would be uh, be very happy to have her pulled over and put in jail for her speeding or something. I think you're right. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Got to get the weather in here, and then we'll take some more of your calls. And the weather brought to you by some really dear friends of mine. Mad River Laser at 502 E Street in Rupert. Oh, you know, I said this the other day, and I had a gentleman call, and he said, where is this place? Well, it's right on the square in Rupert, and I'm telling you, go in the store, and you're just going to be amazed. I mean this. Use the word amazed. at all they can do for you, your business, and uh, they're so professional. I mean, all the jackets, all the jackets. All the caps, all the writing instruments, the calendars, the uh, satchels, the drawstring bags, uh, anything you need for your offices, desk, pen sets, everything. Wow. I mean, they can personalize these to make your business flourish at Mad River Laser. They're good. 502 E Street in Rupert. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Weather forecast for this Tuesday, January 19th, and we are expecting some rain showers for today, especially this afternoon. It's going to be a little bit on the windy side out of the southeast, right around 11 miles an hour today, a high of 38. Now, the rain showers this afternoon 
could turn into snow showers in the evening and overnight hours with a low near 33. Tomorrow, winds picking up to about 20 miles an hour, high of 36 with an overnight low of 20. Mostly sunny and 40 for Thursday and cloudy and 42 for Friday. Yesterday's high was 41 and the overnight low was 27. That's your weather for 7th Ranch. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Gina. Thank you. And brought to you this hour by Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert. Nicole and the crew, really nice people. Honestly, folks, do you and your circle of friends, do you sit down and talk about the things that are going on in this country and the world? Have you really sat down? I mentioned this one time, oh, three, four months ago. I said the, uh, the covers of the Saturday Evening Post are gone forever. And I remember after that program that day, a lady called me and she said, what do you mean by that? I said, the goodness, the greatness, and the sanctity and the value system of Norman Rockwell's Saturday Evening Post covers, I saved a lot of those, are gone forever. And I honestly maintain to you, and a lot of the kids listening, when I say kids, probably under 30, you probably don't even have a clue as to what I'm talking about. But there was a wholesomeness in America that was painted and depicted by Rockwell that showed families sitting down and praying at the table before a meal. It showed families walking hand in hand to go to a church of their choice on Sunday mornings. It showed families out recreating and having fun together with other neighbors. It showed America at its best. And that's why at the end of my program I always say these words, the way things were, are the way things ought to be. Oh, I've been criticized for that. Oh, boy. The uh, liberals that live in this area, well, you got to wake up and smell the coffee. Things have changed. Yeah, they have. Yep, you're right. They have. And not for the better. I am a Christian, proud of it. I believe that we need to clean up our act. And I'll never back up from that. There are those that want to be so liberal-minded. Oh, we'll give them this. Oh, we'll let them do this. Oh, everybody's got a right to do that. Oh, everybody can do this and that. And then you have nothing but chaos. And that's exactly what we're going through right now. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. This is way off on a tangent, but I'm going to say this real quick. I remember here about two weeks ago, we were talking about uh, these young kids. I'm not talking 9, 10, 11-year-olds. I'm talking guys that are maybe out, have a job, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, Walking around with their pants hanging down so low that they got to shuffle like a duck to keep the pants going completely to their ankles. And one guy I saw here a couple of weeks ago in Twin Falls walking along on the sidewalk. His butt was hanging completely out. Seriously, I'm I'm not making it up. I about ran off the road when I saw that. There's no class left in America anymore. And when you see something like that, supposing somebody from a foreign country, Japan, or the Netherlands, or Italy or something, they see this, is that indicative of the American lifestyle? These dumb, dumb, never been anywhere, never had to raise a family, never had to hold a job, never had to honor a paycheck. Kids with their pants below their butt. Oh boy, that's great. American values. I still say that I think we ought to put together a funding program and hire a couple of big, burly bulldoggers, drive around communities in their pick up trucks, and when they see somebody stupid like this, give them a wedgie that absolutely you can hear the screams from here to Boise. That's my thinking. 
Don't forget your Magic Belly Les Schwab Tire Setters with all the traction tires ready for you. Oh, my goodness sakes. We're going to get more snow. Yeah, we're going to get more ice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I can't stand ice either. And uh, they've got all the tires for you, including all the performance tires. Yep, like the Formosa FD2, starting at just 7337 all season design. Excellent for wet and dry traction. And, of course, they've got the best in brake service. Mm Mm-hmm. Professionally trained technicians, along with the alignments and the shocks and struts, and, of course, batteries. Oh, boy. You stop in and see your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, John on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Kind of a quick update on Pastor Abedini. He's going to be waiting in Germany for more of the medical tests. He was so severely beaten over in that uh, Iranian prison. And they're going to be doing a lot more medical tests, and his health is not good. I talked to some people back in Washington, D.C. this morning, and from those major beatings, his health is not good. So I understand he's going to be settling himself into a couple of days in Germany, and then I understand also the family is going to be going to meet him someplace on the East Coast when he does fly in, and they need some family time together. They need to basically just get together together and get to know each other again god bless them we're going to take a little break right now and we want to remind you you've been listening to zeb at the ranch for first hour make sure you're hearing everything contact mount harrison audiology for a hearing screening call 312-0957 and we're going to turn it back over to old wheels right now to take us to the news i'll be back in six Hmm, I see a little blue sky out there. My goodness, a little bit of sunshine right now would make everybody feel a lot better. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Absolutely the best, all seven locations. Thank you very much. And some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services. From the Canyon Zone. Locally owned and operated, and I'll tell you what, they are efficient, and they work for you. Getting rid of your garbage, I'll tell you what, Western Waste Service is always at your disposal, 734-6969. Talk about the dumpsters, a lot of people are getting ahead of the game saying, oh my, I'm going to get my spring cleaning done early. Uh, Yeah, in January. Well, get some dumpsters. They got them in various sizes, and when you fill them up, they'll come and get them. You better believe it. The best dumpsters, porta-potties, whatever you need, Western Way Services, always at your disposal, 734-6969. By the way, too, I want to say thank you, and I mean this. Uh, Every day I'm so proud to have on my program the cream of the crop, the best of the best here in this area. Handsome Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, with a phone number to remember, 436-5636. Joel Heward, his staff, his family, serving you. Now, serving you, those are words you hear a lot in various commercials, but it's really the truth. When there's the passing of a loved one, they will be there, always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity, serving you. You. 436 5636 Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Oh, I look forward to today. I do. I mean, man, I'll tell you what, old Frosty Woldridge is in Golden, Colorado. He is reveling in the fact that his Denver Broncos beat Pittsburgh. And I, on the other hand, am feeling lower than a snake's bottom because my Packers in overtime lost to Arizona. Good morning, Frost. Well, good morning, Zeb. And, uh, yeah, pretty uh, exciting that the Broncos really squeaked that one out. 
uh, I, literally, I, I watched the whole thing, and on the last part there, I think my blood pressure was way over the top. And uh, anyway, it was it was fun and it was exciting. And uh, yeah, the Green Bay Packers. Sorry, they uh, they just uh, they had to deal with those uh, Cardinals. And I'm telling you, those folks are rolling. But as you noticed, uh, the Panthers. Oh my gosh, I mean that's the team to beat. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next week. And uh, you know, no question about it. You look at all these playoff games. And it's the best of the best, and it's a dog fight from the, the, the opening minute to the last second. So it uh, makes for great uh, entertainment, great sports, and, uh, you know, everything and everyone talking about it on Monday morning. It's, uh, it's just fantastic. So it's a, it's a great lead-up to the Super Bowl. Frosty, I want to get right to the, the meat of the program this morning. And we have been friends for a long, long time, and I hope it continues to be that way. But we as friends don't don't always agree on every subject and that's the way it should be we have different opinions on different things but as of late with what's going on in this country with this administration and our lack of concern for our value system in America, our lack of concern for our security, our lack of concern for our Constitution. I said it first hour, and I mean it, and I want to hear your words about it. We've lost the grisly attitude we need to remain the top dog in this world. I don't think we've got it anymore. On this point, I would certainly agree. Uh, the American people have shied away from have, 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 have literally they have been shrinking away from uh, any confrontation with the immigration crisis facing this country we have been backpedaling on the Muslim importation into this country and as you can see the Congress of the United States has reflected that same fear of standing up uh, has reflected all of the aspects of the American people uh, with uh, being bought off let's face it the Congress of the United States is bought off by the corporate elite is bought off by big money that's why we don't have any kind of enforcement of our immigration laws within the country or at the borders and as long as the American people continue to shy away from and then vote uh, those same people back into office every time, I mean, as I've said dozens of times before, when you keep voting in a John McCain or a Barbara Boxer or a Dianne Feinstein or a Charles Schumer or a Rubio or a Clack or, or a Hatch or right on down the line, certainly a Luis Gutierrez, no oh boy. Or Joe Bach out of California, you're going to get exactly what we've got. And, and that's what we've got. A country that has no borders, has no leadership, $19 trillion in debt. Uh, and it's only going to get worse because the American people keep voting in the same people to put us in the same problem. And uh, that's going to continue, unfortunately. And at some point in time, we're literally going to lose our country. I've written about it many times. And, um, and I said in one of my latest columns last year, prepare for a different kind of America. And uh, that's what's happening. And it's, it's not going to just happen in the big cities. It's going to happen in Boise, Idaho. And I think you all are dealing with Muslim importation right there into Idaho right now. So yeah. you're going to see a change just like it's happened in Europe. And uh, that, that's the way it is right now. And until someone stands up and speaks out like a Donald Trump, and actually gets into office and gets voted into office, uh, we are going to have the same old stuff happen to us. Let me ask you this question, and I'm sure you followed this, but the Obama administration had appealed to the Supreme Court for a long time for a complete review on the Obama administration immigration reform and deportation laws. What are your thoughts? I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. I think this year we're going to be seeing some replacements on the Supreme Court that are going to go to the liberal side. And I think that is what the Obama administration is banking on for the uh, Obama immigration plan, especially regarding deportation. And I think they're going to be buying a lot of votes. What are your thoughts? 
you're, you're correct on that. Uh, again, you have to understand, and I want every person listening to understand the in-depth reality that we're facing. Big money is what keeps uh, the war on drugs uh, since 1971. Notice that the war on drugs has been, we've spent literally trillions of dollars to stop drug flow into this country, but we've never done anything to stop drug flow. That's in the hands of the Congress and the presidents of the United States since 1971. Notice that drugs are as available today as ever. Notice for the last 40 years that the same borders have not been secured. Uh, all sorts of excuses. We don't want to make uh, Mexico feel ashamed. We don't want to. We don't want to step on people's rights, etc., etc., etc. And so uh, that just to, you know, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It, it shouldn't be called the U.S. Chamber of Commerce because it's run by men and women who are in favor of endless legal and illegal immigration. And, and since that is so, and since the American people, again, keep voting at John McCain right into office, and he's indicative of all the other senators that will not stand up for the American people, then you're going to continue to get the same problems, whether it's the war on drugs, which has never been stopped at the borders, and you're going to get the same illegal immigration that has never been stopped at the borders, and when they break into the country, and they're working at jobs. They have not been stopped at working in the jobs because employers are never tracked down, never prosecuted. And certainly uh, this is going to continue as long as we keep voting in the John McCain's into the Congress. Let me ask you this, and uh, we've talked about this in a roundabout way in the past, but uh, you and I are basically the same age, and uh, I just want to see what your thoughts are. We're from originally the same area of the Midwest, but what happened to the pride in America? What I mean by that is, I mentioned last hour that the old Saturday evening post covers with Norman Rockwell of families going to church together together and sitting at the table together and having a meal and praying together and going out and recreating together. That's gone. That's gone. What happened to the pride in America of looking up at that flag with tears in your eyes and thanking God that you live in the best country ever in the history of the world? What happened to it? Well, I've said this before, and I can say it with certitude. In 1965, when the Immigration Reform Act was passed by Teddy Kennedy, Howard Metzenbaum, and Jacob Javits, we stopped taking in compatible uh, Western uh, immigration at 175,000 per year. Uh, we started taking in 190 different countries and all of their unwanted or frightened or fleeing immigrants, and we added 100 million people from all these third world countries. And, and they're not compatible with America. Anyone that walks into Detroit today or Minneapolis, Minnesota or Fremont, California or Los Angeles or even Dallas or Houston could tell you right now that the Saturday Evening Post with Norman Rockwell paintings are not possible because we no longer are the same American people. We are a mixture. We are a multicultural quagmire. We are uh, incompatible religions. Uh, we are literally a, a country that's lost its soul. And uh, that's happened to Canada. It's happening in Europe. It's certainly happening in Australia. Uh, it's never going to change. And in fact, the, it's going to get worse because, as I've said many times, we're about to add another 100 million third world immigrants into America. Therefore, Norman Rockwell could not possibly paint a cohesive mosaic of Americans who love America, who are born here. Uh, and who love this country and the Constitution, because most of these immigrants are from third world countries. They can't even speak their, they can't even write their own language, let alone understand English. So how do you think they appreciate, love, or care about the American Constitution or the Stars and Stripes? They can't, they won't, and they aren't. Um, and what, as a matter of fact, Norman Rockwell, if he had to start painting today, would have to start painting the Muslim mosaic as it starts to take over. And certainly the Mexican mosaic, as it starts to take over, he'd start to, to start making comments by the people in those paintings in Spanish and in Arabic. Um, and we did it to ourselves. We didn't, we didn't stand up. We didn't speak out. 
and uh, we're not speaking up and standing out right now. And so this this new scourge, this new kind of paradigm is going to manifest in this country even more than it is right now unless we stop all immigration into this country which i've called for for the last six months i will say this i think right now the liberal mindset here in the twin falls area burley rupert there's a couple of them but you know there's a, a mindset oh well we'll welcome these people in so we have a diversity of culture you know what frosty i couldn't give a rat's tale about diversity of culture and you know why because we're losing our culture it's diminishing stronger every day it's going away it's fading away and our culture the American spirit what people came to this country four years ago as a melting pot into the American culture I see as being almost history that's correct you know and I've, I've said it many times in my quotes uh, about losing your culture let me repeat this again I think it's so important any culture that will not defend itself against displacement through mass immigration faces extinction. That includes both time-tested and successful cultures. Embracing diversity equates to cultural suicide. America's multicultural path guarantees its destruction via cultural clashes and conflict with Islam, Mexican, and African cultures that diametrically oppose the American culture. The more diverse a country, the more destructive and broken down its future. The more people, the more it destroys its quality of life and standard of living. The more it adds immigrants, the more destruction to its environment. The more it imports refugees, the faster America, Canada, Europe, and Australia lose their own ability to function and their national identities. Exponential growth of any civilization leads to collapse. You see it in Africa, India, and China today. You will see it in Europe, Canada, Australia, and America in the coming years if Western countries don't stop all forms of immigration, unquote. I, I don't think it can be put any clearer than that as to what we face if we don't stop mass immigration into the United States. We won't have a country left to even care for because it'll just be a polyglot of languages, a polyglot of cultures, a polyglot of ethnic tension, and everybody separating to their own uh, corner of every city, just as you see right now, except it's going to get worse because it's going to get antagonistic as there are more uh, literally uh, wars for water, certainly for energy, and then, you know, jobs that are not going to be there, so you can't even pay for all those who are, are living on welfare right now. And as I've said in the past, 91% of immigrants live on welfare. In other words, on yours and my tax dollars and right. back. Some point when those numbers grow beyond our ability to pay for all these freeloaders, uh, we're, we're just going to literally collapse our country. We have a caller with a quick question. Go ahead, caller, quickly. Talk to me, caller, quickly. Yeah, I'm talking. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. In Europe, uh, the uh, Sharia law is, is beginning to literally take over the, the structure of their justice system over there. And uh, they're so afraid to fight it, they're allowing it to occur. And when you study Sharia, they, this, is a, this is their definition of Sharia about the Constitution. Sharia is perfect, and the Constitution is not. And, and so it's just, what's happening in Europe is going to happen to us. And I just don't know if we don't wake up, I'll hang up. I'll you know, Frosty, that caller is a good friend of mine, and uh, he brings up an excellent point. We're more concerned about other cultures, we're more concerned about the way they live and the way they conduct themselves than we are right here in this country with our Constitution. As a matter of fact, here's a point. We've heard about attacks on the First Amendment. Some of the millennials that don't have the sense that God gave a goat want to stop free speech. Then we've heard about many, many attacks on the Second Amendment with our guns, and now they're even talking about changing the Constitution to take away the natural-born citizenship for the presidency. Little by little, there is an erosion of our Constitution because people aren't aware of how great it really is. 
There's no question about that. And, and, and as a matter of fact, in 1952, the Congress passed a law that we would not accept any kind of a political religious system to manifest in the United States. Uh, and, and that is uh, on the law. Uh, it's on the books. And, and, and Sharia law is a different kind of law than the U.S. Constitution, and in fact, diametrically opposes it. First of all, it takes away all women's rights, takes away every, everyone's right to choose any kind of religion or free speech, and right on down the line. So uh, in technicality, Sharia law and the Muslim religion cannot operate over here under our Constitution. And certainly, we can't operate in any kind of constitutional law in, in, in Muslim-dominated countries. Uh, but the problem is, we're a bunch of cowards. And we've got a Muslim president right now who literally has 11 more months to continue to push and import more Muslims who will then manifest more voting muscle and then you're going to see more of this Sharia law manifest here in the country, just like the caller just said. And it's because we're it playing cowards to stand up for our own country and our own laws and our own constitution. So you're going to see more erosion of the constitution in the coming years. Let me ask you one final thought here, short answer on this. I'm almost out of time. But back in the Denver area, the greater Denver and Colorado area, I would be surprised if you could count more than 10 or 12 media representatives on the radio, television, and or in the newspaper that really are showing concern to get things back the way they should be. In other words, uh, go back to a value system and morality in America. The media, I blame for almost 99% of our problems. What are your thoughts? Well, yeah, there are several here in Denver. Uh, Steve uh, Curtis at uh, KLZ 560 uh, is a conservative talk show, and he actually uh, addresses these uh, consequences. And even more in depth than him is a Peter Boyles, uh, and he he goes KNUS 710 KNUS, and he brings in guys like Robert Spencer, who spells it out. And, and, and quite a few other top, uh, a, a Jerry Corsi, which if you all go on Facebook, you know, you see me on Facebook with Frosty Wooldridge, my Facebook page. I bring you all those, those columns that these guys also write. Uh, but other than Peter Boyles and the Steve Curtis and the Zeb Bell, uh, the American people, there's, there's also uh, Levin, uh, Mark Levin, who does a pretty good job. But for the most part, all the radio talk show hosts are just cowed. Uh, Lou Dobbs is at least speaking up, and I would stand with him. But really, everything else and everyone else is cowering to the liberal agenda and mass immigration and, and, and then the Muslim onslaught. Uh, and, and we're all going to pay a severe price as our country continues to fracture uh, and fragment into these pieces so that we, we no longer have a Norman Rockwell country. And we don't right now. And it's just going to get worse as we continue with this next added 100 million uh, legal immigrants in the next 30 years. I, I don't see anything, uh, any way around it unless the American people stand up and say, enough of this, we want a complete shutdown of all immigration. That's the only chance we have to even survive this thing. I agree. Frosty, always a great conversation, man. I'll tell you what, uh, look forward to Tuesdays. God bless you, my dear friend, back in Golden, Colorado, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. God bless them. Thank you. Frosty Woolridge, a dear friend. Thank you very, very much. You know, on this program, and they have been for a long time, we brag about, and it's not brag if it's real and true, and it's real and true, let's ride over at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. That's where I got my four-wheelers. That's who gave me the incentive to get four-wheelers. You know, I kind of hemmed and hawed for a couple of years, and I said, ah, well, I don't know. And then I went and bought two of them <coughs> without letting Deanne know, and I thought the roof would cave in, but she loves to go on the four-wheelers, so we have a good time together. You can enjoy the great outdoors. Let's ride. They've got all the four-wheelers, all the snow machines. They've got all the accessories. They've got all the clothing. They've got all the motorcycles and motorcycle accessories. It's all there. And they live up to the slogan, this is where the fun is sold. Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. You stop in and see them today at Let's Ride. What's the <clears throat> for? Oh, uh, Hi, sir. Uh, I got a hold of John LeBoutlier, and um, I have some updated news for you. He, unfortunately, cannot do the show today for his spot because he is in the emergency room with his brother. Oh, my! 
Yeah, he said he could do it tomorrow if you could possibly call him after the program, but he said that he cannot do it this morning because of his brother being in the emergency room. Oh, my goodness. Well, we certainly wish John the best. And uh, wheels, as you are always on top of things over there. By golly, appreciate that information. And so I guess what we'll do is have an open half hour, and I'm going to sit here and have Sweat City and hope people call in. So John Laboutlier not going to be on the program. Thank you very much for that update. You're welcome. All right. Oh, my. i got to tell you real quick about what uh, John Laboutlier, you've heard him on this program program before. So it's an open forum, and you've heard a lot of what we've talked about this morning. And I think I'll turn this into kind of a open half hour for you to call me and let me know, do you think I'm wrong? Come on, you can be very blatant and honest and tell me if you think I'm wrong. I think America has lost its bite. I think America is bordering on the verge of cowardice. That's not to blame our military. Our military is the best military in the world, the best. And of the military people that I've talked to and I hold in the highest regard, they absolutely feel like their hands are tied behind them. Thanks to an administration that absolutely has no clue. What are your thoughts? I think that right now, We are at the most susceptible time in our nation's history, any time in our nation's history, to where the bad guys can take over the good guys. Let me know what your thoughts are. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Caller, I'll be right there. Thank you for your call. All your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, they've got it all, and they're accessible and devoted to serving you good, good people at Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Call for an appointment at 436 444 Four two four. Caller, thank you for your call. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Zeb. When I was in the military, uh, either branch of the service that I was in, whether it was the Army or later the U.S. Coast Guard, our military strength was at a high that it hadn't been in years, and nobody was messing with it. This was back in the 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. Huh? Now, under this administration, we now have a military service, and this is for all the branches, that is of lower strength than before World War II. We are very susceptible. Nobody takes us serious anymore, and they just laugh at our face because they know that we're not going to do anything about it if they do something facetious or, you know, wrong in the world, you might say. Well, I know that um, I'm not going to mention names on this. That would be very rude of me if I did. But I have talked to many, many people in the military, many in the Navy, many in the Army, many in the Air Force, many in the Marines. And to a person, man and woman, to a person, they have all looked at me and out of the corner of their eye with a low voice have said, we're in trouble. We're in trouble with this administration. We're in trouble with the doctrines that this government has tried to back away from. We are in trouble. And right there, when I respect the military more than anything else, I would do anything to help them. But when they tell me that we're in trouble because of a lack of leadership or leadership that doesn't amount to much, I'm scared. Yeah, uh, me too. Uh, Right now, I believe that our higher echelon officer leadership, you know, the, the, the high-ranking generals and admirals and stuff are all yes-men because Obama has gotten rid of all of the true patriot high-ranking generals and admirals. And, uh, you know, the only thing I can say of is that people need to realize what's going on and I hope they wake up and vote in a president that will uh, get our budget under control rebuild the military so that we're no longer the laughing stock of the world as far as the military is concerned 
and uh, you know brings our country back to the way it used to be you know at least 20 years ago well i appreciate your call as always god bless you for breaking the ice and thank you very much appreciate that you too, Zeb. thank you good. you know that man brought up some really good points have, have we got to the point where, you know, you wouldn't believe the amount of emails, letters, uh, telephone calls, people say, oh, you're too much of a redneck. You want to get in there and you want to do this and that. Well, you've got to have more negotiation and everything. Wait a minute. What good has negotiations done us with the bad guys? What good are we going to get out of sitting down with the likes of John Kerry as Secretary of State, negotiating just nothing more than put your tail between your legs and run? Now, there are those that say, oh, we can't do that. Why, we might risk the uh, threat of nuclear war. What are we doing to stop that risk? Nothing. Nothing. You know, uh, John Wayne was an actor, okay? But he loved this country. And before he passed on, he had an album that he did quite a few voiceovers on, the different songs, in a kind of a chanting, really uh, interesting type of verbiage. And the album was called America Why I Love Her. And you listen to that, and I still bubble up with tears in my eyes. And some of those recordings that he used, we have used at rodeos, at openings all across the United States. Because it just, when you stand up and you watch that flag running into the arena, you get the goosebumps up your back, and you just, you feel proud to be an American. And living in the greatest country in the world ever. But then we elected Obama. Change and hope. Yeah, remember that? Hope and change, change and hope. And look what's happened. You have everybody wanting things given to them. You have the millennials, the younger generation. I want this, and I don't want to pay for it. I want a free education. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to have all these bills. And we sit back, and we have the likes of socialist Bernie Sanders telling everybody that he's going to tax everybody if he gets elected. God forbid, never will happen. 90% in taxes out of the rich's income. I mean, basically, it's just going to be a Robin Hood theory of take from the rich, give to the poor, and then pretty soon everybody's poor. And then you've got the likes of Hillary Clinton running for president. She's got enough indictments possibly against her that would keep her in prison for the rest of her life, hopefully. That's what the Democrats are putting up for possible election for president? Oh, sure. To be fair, on the other side of the coin, a lot of people don't like Donald Trump. They don't like his brash attitude. They don't like his arrogant attitude. They don't like the way he says what he thinks. He's criticized for not maybe knowing all the intricacies of politics, the ins and outs and the where's and where to fours. And there are those that will criticize everybody down the line on the GOP. Why, that's the party of hate. Okay. So what do we do? So what do we do? I will come right out and say that I think that you've got to be borderline idiot to vote for Hillary Clinton. You do not want another four-year extension of the absolute pathetic politics that Obama has started. Can't stand another four years. Ain't going to happen. And, of course, somebody like socialist Bernie Sanders, oh, brother, that's a monster movie waiting to be seen. And on the other side of the coin, do you think Donald Trump would make a good president? Would he sit there in the Oval Office? Would he be dedicated to the job? 
Would he be dedicated to figuring out the ins and outs of what's going to make America tick better? Whether it's Medicare, Social Security, whether it's immigration, whatever the points might be, would he be dedicated to that job? Or, if not him, who? We've got to make some big, big decisions here this year. And I'll guarantee you one thing. If we make the wrong decision, you can scrap any ideas of us becoming that junkyard dog again that leads the world, and we're nothing more than a old coon dog, toothless, laying on the back porch enjoying the sunshine. That's about where we're at right now. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call. If you agree or disagree, come on, give me a jingle. I'd love to hear from you. While I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, don't forget Red's Trading Post. I'm going to be running in there, I think, later on today, as a matter of fact. And they've got all the firearms from Browning, Beretta, Weatherby, Ruger, Benelli, Smith & Wesson, Winchester. Yeah, buddy. And uh, they've been in that historic old town location since 1936. I'm telling you, all the accessories, all the good people working there to help you with what you're purchasing, all the things like, oh, by the way, the hard-to-find powder for the reloaders, Yep, they've got it right there at Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Caller, thank you for your call. Go ahead, please. Yes, Kev, uh, you know, you're talking about this. There was this, it used to be said that the sun never set on the English Empire. And now they are literally being, I mean, the, the European media is covering up what is happening in, in the UK and the rest of Europe with this Sharia, with the Muslims, and uh, they are, and, and even the Prime Minister is condoning this. And you'd say to yourself, do you guys not realize that you are literally going to suffer and die because of this tolerance? You know, Randy, I want to tell you something about you uh, before I go into what the subject matter is. I admire you for standing up and speaking your mind. And I will say this, and I can say it in a jocular fashion because you're a good enough friend. You will admit over the years calling into this program, sometimes you've kind of stepped on your own toes. And uh, because you're so passionate about what this country needs to do, when I appreciate that. I really do. Because we need more people that are passionate about what we've lost, and we need more people that are passionate to try to get it back. And that's where we're at. Well, there's no question that I've made a fool of myself at times, and uh, I just say what's on my mind, yep. and, and then sometimes it doesn't go over so well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I study and learn, but, you know, sometimes when you're speaking on the air, uh, you know, you you just don't get the, your message out like you should. Yeah, but wait a minute. You're, you're, don't miss my point, though. God bless you for speaking out. God bless you for criticizing. God bless you for critiquing what's going on. Whether it comes out in the right fashion or the wrong fashion, you have the backbone to stand up for your convictions. A lot of people don't. Well, this is the thing. Every day I get up and I say to myself, am I so blessed to, to live in America? And, and because it's, uh, you know, structurally safe, my children and grandchildren are. And you, you know as well as I do, you know, if it was between you and your wife or your children or your grandchildren, you'd die in a minute for them. And, and so my attitude is that I do not want to be irresponsible about what has been given to us. And so, right there, you know, if, it, if it means that I look foolish some days, but I'm willing to say something and maybe it might just by a chance inspire somebody to, to get involved then it's worth it. Absolutely. Great summation. Right there. And I always appreciate you. And I want to let you know that you just keep on keeping on, buddy. Don't change. God bless you. I got another call. Thanks. You got thanks. All right. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good morning. 
I'm willing to say that maybe Randy's father or a grandfather was a veteran of the Second World War. My dad was a veteran of the Second World War, and he also had gone to college and done quite a bit of study about law, but he was a historian. And I swear, he raised a bunch of eight kids that were more loyal to this country almost than we were to him. And he, he pounded that in our heads. Now, as I try to tell my kids, they just don't see it because they've had it so good. Wait a minute. Chris, let me interrupt you there for a minute. What you just said right there is a summation of the problem today. I, I get up in the morning and I thank God I live here. I thank God I had the business opportunities here. All I had to do was put forth the effort, and the achievement was there and available. I thank God I live in a country where if I want to run to the store, I can go to the store. If I want to go down to California, if I want to go to Oklahoma, I can go. I thank God for my wife and my family living underneath that red, white, and blue flag. And what is wrong with thanking God for our blessings? Because we're losing little by little the thought and the concept of what made America great. Okay, and on that note, let's look around the world and see how many of them include God in their Pledge of Allegiance. One nation under God. And we're opening up the spill gates to a nation of people who do not believe in the God that we, got, and we do. It used to be, and I stand behind this, that people wanted to come to this country because of the values. They wanted to come to this country for the opportunities. They want to come to this country for the freedoms. And now, today, I honestly believe that they just want to come to this country for the freebies, the gimmies, and they want to come to change our values. Well, and I think I've told you numerous times that our family has hosted five exchange students from all over the world. And when they would say, we wish we could stay here, we love America, I would tell them, go home, take these values home with you, and change your own country. Amen. You can't all move to the United States. Yeah, but you know, that's not the concept, and when I say that, I underline the word not. That's not the concept of this administration, and not the concept of this uh, Obama and his philosophy. Come on! Everybody come on in! And it's kind of like a rowboat. When the Titanic was going down, you can't put everybody in the same boat, or you have the same problem. Down goes the boat. Yeah, and I hope the voters of our country are not missed misunderstanding him because I think a lot of people think he's stupid. I think he's smart as a rat. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And he's showing it. Anyway, thanks uh, for all you do. God bless you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Calls welcome 436 2244 Man, I'll tell you what, I just don't I just don't understand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Choked up. Why people can't look at this country, look at our surroundings, look at the beauty, look at the wealth, and be proud of America and its achievements, its people, its history, and basically tell the negatives, the naysayers, if you don't like it, get out of here. I don't mind at all making enemies with certain people that run this country down. If they're not standing up doing, during the Pledge of Allegiance or the National Anthem, I'm not above criticizing and chastising them, and I couldn't care less if somebody's offended or not. Do you feel the same way? We've got to put some pride back in this country i got to get the weather on here, and then I'll take some more calls. Weather brought to you this hour by Mountain Transmissions. All makes and models, cars, trucks, RVs, motorhomes. I'm telling you, Rick knows transmissions. Why? 30 years experience. He knows what's going to take to go from drive to park and reverse and all that. I'll tell you what and keep you going. 
Sounds simplified, but they can repair and rebuild anything. And they've got a transmission tune-up special going on right now, just eighty nine ninety five. Better get it checked. You stop in at 504 East Main in Burley or give them a call at 678-9110 Mountain Transmissions. Here's Gina with the weather. Here's your weather forecast for this Tuesday, January 19th, and we are expecting some rain showers for today, especially this afternoon. It's going to be a little bit on the windy side out of the southeast, right around 11 miles an hour today, a high of 38. Now, the rain showers this afternoon could turn into snow showers in the evening and overnight hours with a low near 33. Tomorrow, winds picking up to about 20 miles an hour, high of 36 with an overnight low of 20. Mostly sunny and 40 for Thursday and cloudy and 42 for Friday. Yesterday's high was 41, and the overnight low was 27. That's your weather for 7th Ranch. Oh, thank you very much, Gina. As always, a great weather forecast brought to you this hour by Mountain Transmissions, 504 East Main in Burley. How do you do, Rick? Keep working over there, 6789110. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know, it, to some... This might be corny, but honestly, I saw it in person, and I cried also. But when I had many, many times Russell Smith on my program, three times Purple Heart winner, World War II, and I listened to him talk about serving his country, and I saw the pride and the tears well up in his eyes, And then I think about somebody that's sitting on a curb at a 4th of July parade or sitting in the stands at a rodeo or some event, and they say, Ladies and gentlemen, please now rise for the playing of our national anthem. And they sit there, and they just kind of hee-haw, hee-haw. And those people disgust me. And I'm not above, like I said a moment ago, telling them exactly what I think. Because I think of Russell Smith. I think of him being shot and bleeding. Not once, not twice, but three times. And then going back for more. Fighting for his country. And fighting for that lazy bum that sits on the curb or sits in his seat, yeah, I'm not going to support the National Anthem. Yeah, I'm not going to get up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I detest those people. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. And yet I will bet you anything, I'll bet you lunch at Denny's, Somebody's going to call me after the program and say, well, they have that right to do as they wish because he he fought in the service for them to have the right of dissent. Well, yes, they did. And he did. But they are what's wrong with America today. We've lost our pride in our country. Man, I... I go back to this so many times because I can remember my dad and my uncle fought in World War II. And I can remember going to a 4th of July parade one year. We had a saddle club back in Wisconsin, and we always rode in the parade. And our colors were red, white, and blue, and they would always put us up in front carrying the United States flags, etc. And we would stop in the middle of the road in the color guard and everything. Long story short, it was really a beautiful, picturesque way to start a 4th of July celebration parade. And in the color guard, my uncle would march out, and I'll never forget looking at my uncle carrying the rifle in his uniform and looking next to my dad that was sitting there holding an American flag with me in the front line and watching the tears stream down their face for pride in this country. Don't anybody come up and tell me that you're going to sit there during the National Anthem or the Pledge. 
Call is welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. What was supposed to happen this half hour was a very, very dear friend of ours that you see on television on Sundays on the Fox News Channel on the program called Political Insiders, John Laboutlier along with Pat Cadell and Doug Schoen, was going to be on the program this morning. We had a whole litany of list of things that we were going to talk about in regards to not only the GOP and the candidates, but also Hillary. We were going to be talking about the weakness shown by this administration in North Korea, Iran, Saudi Arabia. I will do my very, very best to try to reestablish a contact with Doug. He's been on my program before. He's a nice, nice guy. And uh, we'll try to get it reestablished. I do have have one opening left for this week, and we'll see if he can fit into that. But uh, really, a good program. Uh, Political Insiders on Fox News, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Time, five thirty here in the Mountain Time Zone on Sundays. And so we'll try to get him reestablished. Calls are welcome. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Please give me a call. Uh, real quick, I'll say that if you're having any hearing problems, you'd better get a hold of Mount Harrison Audiology for a hearing screening. And make sure that you can hear everything. The number to call for an appointment, 312-0957. You call them today. A uh, little news note here, and this is really important to mention, and the telephone's ringing and nobody answering it. There we go. Um, I noticed I, I was watching a story yesterday that is very, very important for women that are pregnant that might be traveling down to Mexico or any of the southern American states, South American states, I should say, in countries. Um, they have now come up with a new worry with a new virus, and it's called the Zika virus. And when I heard this, it's absolutely scary as to what this virus can do. It's transmitted by a mosquito bite. And if you're going to any of those areas during the course of our winter up here to get to the warmer climates, be extremely careful and even reconsider. Talk to your doctors because this mosquito bite carrying that new virus called the Zika virus, if bitten, it could cause severe malformation of children. And some of the horror stories that they were talking about on the news yesterday are absolutely hideous. So again, a reminder. If you're going to be going to Mexico or you're going to be going to any South American country, check with your doctors first because a very serious virus due to mosquito bites, the Zika virus, Z-I-K-A, and very devastating. Okay? We are going, I can hear him, he walked in the door, and he's ready to go for the next half hour, and on Tuesdays, of course, that means Dr. History, and uh, he's going to be coming up here in just a little bit, but we're going to turn this back over to Old Wheels, Old Wheels over at our main studios, and he's going to play a catchy little tune leading us up to the CBS News, and we'll be back in about six minutes. God bless, we'll see you in six. Oh, boy. I'm looking forward to this next half hour. The truth and history come together. Sometimes they're torn apart. We're going to be visiting with Dr. History in just a moment. Don't forget, you're listening to Zebeth Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. And, of course, some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Um, don't forget the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. What have they got for a special today? Thought you'd never ask. Chicken enchiladas. Do you like chicken enchiladas? I love chicken enchiladas. Chicken, not chicken. I like chicken enchiladas. Better with the I instead of the E. Uh, served with Spanish fries super salad. That's the special along with all the great menu choices at the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. Today, chicken enchiladas. Enchiladas! You can throw your hat on the floor and dance around it and everything else. Um, Also, let's see real quick, what else have I got? Oh, I guess I'll just go right to the fact 
that we have Dr. History ready to go in the studio. And he's brought to you by Minicash Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport with Zach and the whole crew. Hey, I'll tell you more about them in just a few minutes. But right now, here he is, back from fun and frolic or whatever the heck he was doing. Good morning, Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How you doing today? What were you doing anyway? Oh, just visiting uh, down to St. George. Uh, I see. Of course, somebody had to golf, and I just sacrificed myself. They had an open place in the little cart. <laughs> they did, yeah. and I did go. So you drove 500 miles to take and fill that open space. I, I did. You know, it was a sacrifice, but hey, you know, you do what you got to do in this well, life. The people that own the golf course said it was a sacrifice, too. <laughs> <laughs> they, had, they had to call Kimberly Nursery. <laughs> they come and replace the grass. Oh, dear. What do we got today? Well, the big thing in the news today is a movie that has received 12. Academy Award what, nominations, nominations right, uh, right. The Revenant, right. which is the story of Hugh Glass and Jim Bridger somewhat. And uh, for our listeners that want to hear the story of Hugh Glass, go back on my podcast to DrHistory.com, April 29th of 2014. And that's where I go through and tell the story of Hugh Glass, and then you can compare with the book or the movie or both. And I think what I told in the, on that podcast was pretty close to accurate of what really happened. So well, Now, wait a minute. Let's be fair to this whole situation and be fair to history also. That when it comes to historical facts, I don't care if you're going to the Mountain Man era. I don't care if you're going to Billy the Kid. I don't care if you're going to General George Armstrong Custer. There is a tough, tough uh, hill to climb in finding out all the facts as perfectly as you can. That's right. And uh, to their credit, I guess they did the best they could with the movie. Yeah. And uh, Well, it's Hollywood. It is. And it was Hollywoodized yeah. somewhat. So we're going to go about... Uh, Let's see, Jim Bridger now is about 52 years old. During this time period? Well, the story I'm going to tell today. I see, okay. So he was only about 20 or so when the Hugh Glass event occurred. So uh, anyway, so it's now almost 40 years since Jim Bridger went up the Missouri under Ashley and Henry. And when a stranger asked him how long he'd been on the frontier, it was his habit to reply solemnly, seriously. He says, you see that hill? When I first saw the mountains, that was only a hole in the ground. <laughs> so... There was a touch of exaggeration. He, he did. And we'll get into that a little okay. more here. But, you know, Kit Carson, uh, owing to the publicity given his exploits in the uh, Fremont expeditions, had long been rated by the public as the greatest scout on the plains. But by 1860, there were other officers and uh, other men of good standing who, uh, you know, they knew Bridger and they see uh, saw how good he was and that he was coming into his own uh, learning. And uh, by many, he was given the rating of being the best guide and interpreter in the Indian country. This was Bridger? Yeah. Oh. Now, Kate Carson had a well-deserved reputation, and we don't want to take away from that, but the two scouts were individuals, each with their own peculiar attitudes and attributes. Good and, word, peculiar. Yeah, peculiar. Yeah. Now, Bridger's qualifications were many, really. His motto was, when in Indian country, do as the Indians do, and do it better if you want to survive. Mm. He prided himself that he could outdo them at anything. He had lived with the Indians and under the same conditions for so long that he thought and acted very often in the same manner. So what are you saying, that uh, when it came to a tomahawk throw or shooting the bow and arrow, whatever? I, I would imagine all that. But his mind and habits were geared. How about running? <laughs> running. <laughs> I don't know how fast he could run, but uh, he probably did. But anyway, he had a marked uh, language gift, and he wandered over the West. And as he did so, he picked up Spanish and frontier French, besides nearly a dozen Indian languages, including oh, the Snake, the Bannock, the Crow, the flat, Flathead, the Nez Pierce, the Ute, and the Ponderé, with a, with a few others in mixed there. Now, that would make him a huge asset to any uh, uh, guiding that he did. Yeah, all so, you and I could ever say is how. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, he was so adept at, u at the use of the sign language also that a lot of times when he would talk, he would be using his hands to gesture uh, as, as well as speaking. Almost like a, somebody that knows sign language nowadays, they, they may speak and use their hands at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. But he was a great uh, marksman. You do that a lot on this program. You keep <laughs> Waving your arms, you look like you're landing a jet on an aircraft. 
said, I didn't have to hold this book, I would be. Yeah. But he was a good shot with a rifle, an expert trapper, none better. Uh, his courage and good judgment were acknowledged by everybody who knew him. Now, he also excelled at trailing, and this is some stuff that's really amazed me about him. Mm -hmm. He could read and recognize sign made by any critter on four legs or on two. He could determine the sex, age, gait, and often the purpose of any animal whose trail he picked up. Are you kidding me? No. He could at once identify the tribe of any Indian whose moccasin tracks crossed his trail and was so familiar with his own horse and those of his companions that he could usually recognize the tracks of his horse in the group. I understand you're pretty good, too. You can realize what a train track is. I do. I know exactly what they look like. (laughs) But he could estimate accurately by the warmth of the ashes of a dead fire, campfire, how long it had been since those who built it had left. How do you suppose you learn all that stuff? You know, again, we're looking at a guy that's 56 years old. Yeah. So, you know. Which is younger 30, than both 40, of us. Yes. 30, 40 years of doing this, living yeah. out there. If a track were in sand, he could tell by the amount of sand that had crumbled into it how long before it had been made. Now, that's amazing to me. Yeah. Now, in grass, he could tell whether or not the tracks had been made before or or after dewfall, before or after a shower, even at night, by dismounting and feeding the ground with his hands, he could usually make out the trail. You're kidding. I, I mean, it's amazing. So why don't we take I have a to, break right here? The, I have to use breadcrumbs to find my way out of my office. No, me too. <laughs> Stand by. Hey, don't forget our dear friends at Minicash Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley. Hello, Zach. How you doing over there and the rest of the crew? They open the doors at 8 in the morning till 4.30 Monday through Friday, and I'll tell you what, they've got all your lumber. Are you planning on building something this spring? You're going to kind of renovate and get something, maybe a new porch, a deck, or whatever. I'll tell you, you better stop over there. And they've got all the windows with the western windows, and of course, you know, they've got the Tartar Farm and Ranch gates and panels, everything, and nice, nice people. Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley. Number to call, 878-2091, and they bring you the great Pathfinder, Dr. History. All right, continuing with his skills, uh, in following the trail, he rode or ran a little to one side of of the trail so uh, as not to obliterate the tracks in case he had to go back and verify his observations. Now, he generally looked several yards ahead rather than straight down, since in that way he could see several tracks instead of just one, which he might miss. So this enabled him to follow at a good rate of speed. If he lost a trail, he had only to circle the last visible track until he picked it up again. But his main resource in trailing was his long experience, his imagination, and his great knowledge of the habits of Indians and animals. Wow. So, um, he, he must have really spent some long days <laughs> out there. You know, but this enabled him to guess what they were up to and which way they were likely to go. Whenever he had to uh, peer over a hilltop, he would cover his dark hair with a white cloth so that they wouldn't spot his dark head peeking over the hill. So he knew all the tricks for covering tracks and could unravel the most tangled trail. Really? Now, all men, all mountain men shared these qualities, but Jim had one qualification which made him superior to most guards in the West. He had an amazing memory. And once he had seen a landmark, he could remember it and describe it accurately years and years later. No kidding. And I, I suppose this helped him from getting lost, which would be a good thing out in the West. But, you know, many travelers uh, hunting or in a hurry or on the marks, they look only forward or to the left and right. But Jim had trained himself to look backward every little while so that he saw the country he was coming from from both sides. And you think about it, if you look back on a tr- where you've come, and you've been in the mountains, oh, yeah. if you look back, uh, it helps you to maybe know where you're at. Or yeah, where you're I've done that many times. Yeah. And I'm not that I'm Jim Bridger, yeah. but so, you know, sometimes you get in areas that you go, I yeah. think I better remember this a so little he knew the landmarks in front of him and behind him. Yeah. Now, his uh, habit of being cautious became increasingly useful now that he was piloting greenhorns through Indian country. And some thought he was overcautious at times, but the recklessness and the inexperience of his companions required caution to keep the balance even. So, you know, they were kind of knotheads, I guess, but he was the one that was a steady hand, I guess you could say. So they hired him to be a guide. Right. Okay. Yeah. Military and private. I see. So, so 
here we are, summer of 61. He acted as guide for an engineer named uh, Captain Berthoud, Berthoud, something like that. I think it's Berthoud from Colorado. They named yeah. Berthoud Pass after Okay, Berthoud. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He reports that when Bridger was consulted as to facts, he was truth itself. But when he wished to tell stories, he was also pretty skillful. In fact, uh, his own experience and perhaps some knack picked up from his surveyor father often enabled him to correctly estimate uh, for the engineers that he guided. In fact, one time they asked him which of the two passes they were looking at was lower. Well, Jim immediately pointed to one which he looked to the others much higher, and seeing that they doubted him, Jim challenged them. He said, put your clocks on them and see. And In other words, get your barometer out and you'll see that I'm right, yeah. that that pass is lower than this pass. I see. Now, Bertude was in the service of Rustland Holiday of the Overland Stage Company, and they were seeking a more direct route from Denver to Salt Lake City. Now, what year was this? So this was 1861. Oh, my. He was, I thought he had passed away by then. He was born in 1804, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was getting up there. Yeah, yeah. So he's about... Kind of like you. Mid-50s. Yeah, old guy. <laughs> young. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, uh, Bridger led them through Bertude's Pass to Provo, Utah, right. down the west slope to the White River, the Green River, and up the basin of the Duchesne River. And this was a much shorter route than the old one. And today, the Pikes Peak Ocean to Ocean and Victory Highways follow pretty much the same route. Have you ever been over Bertude Pass? I, I don't I have. think I have. I have. Okay. So here we are now. It's 1862. Bridger put his, he was married. He put his children in the care of friends in a home uh, that he bought in Westport in the spring while resting on his little farm. What state was that? Um, it's Westport, and I'm thinking it's back east. That's what I was thinking. I thought it was. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, am I, if I say Pennsylvania, does that sound right? It could be, but then yeah. it goes on to say that uh, while he was resting on his farm at Little Santa Fe oh. nearby, so then maybe I that don't was know. maybe it was New Mexico. Yeah, might have been. But anyway, he was offered work by the government as a guide to a party of officials on their way to Utah. Well, President Lincoln had named two judges to the Supreme Supreme Court of Utah Territory, and Jim was chosen to pilot them through from St. Joseph, Missouri to Salt Lake. Hmm. And he was offered good wages and presented with a brand new muzzle-loading rifle. And at that time, uh, actually was the very best rifle that the military had. What year was that? 1862. Muzzle loader? Yeah. I question that. Well, I thought that too, because I'm thinking surely they had... They were uh, using cartridges by then. Yeah. So... Maybe it was just the best muzzle loader they had. Maybe they gave him an old army reject. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, a member of this party describes Bridger as he was at the time. He said, in person, Bridger was tall and spare, but erect, active, and energetic. His hair was brown and long and covered his head abundantly, even in old age. Boy, we wish that, don't we? His eyes were gray and keen. Uh, his ex habitual expression was mild, and his manners kind and agreeable. Really? And he he goes, was one of a kind. He was. <laughs> he says he was like most old mountaineers, very generous and hospitable, and was respected and trusted by white men and Indians alike. Mm. Now, he always treated Indians with justice and had their confidence to a high degree. In fact, his wife was an Indian woman of the Shoshone. Tribe. Really? Yeah. So she was probably from Wyoming and in this area? I'm guessing or? it had to be, you know, Idaho, Wyoming, somewhere yeah, in this area. Yeah. But anyway, the, the gentleman in the party often questioned Jim about his explorations, and he described to them the wonders of Yellowstone Park, but he soon, uh, but he was soon uh, made to feel that they didn't really believe him. Uh-oh. So hearing whispers about old Jim Bridger's lies, he got his dander up just a little, a little upset, and decided that if they didn't want the truth, then he would give them some real lies. Well, now, wait a minute. He's got to be close to 70 right now. Uh, yeah. Well, no, he's still in his 50s. I this, see. this is about 1862. Right. To okay. late 50s. Okay. So he decided to, to uh, embellish some of the stories uh, that they thought were lies. Embellish. So, embellish. So he told these unbelievers of the petrified forests in Yellowstone. Oh, this is going to be good. Of petrified trees growing with petrified birds on them, singing petrified songs. A cussed medicine man of the crows had once thrown a curse on a mountain there. And ever since, you could see grass, sagebrush, prairie hens, elk, uh, 
bear, and antelope all turned to stone just as they were that minute. Mm -hmm. The mountain streams and the waterfalls and the mist over them were frozen into stone. Even the sun and the moon shone with petrified light. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So, like I say, Jim, uh, he's got another story here that that he's told around the campfire. He says, "One one day, Jim said, he sighted a bull elk drew a careful bead on the critter and pulled the trigger. Well, the elk did not even raise his head uh, from the grass to show that it had even heard the rifle. Jim crawled up as near as he dared and fired again. Still, the elk grazed undisturbed. A third and fourth shot did no better. Jim was close now. He grabbed his rifle by the barrel, raised it like a club, and charged the elk. Suddenly, he was brought up short and found he had crashed into a mountain of clear glass. <laughs> this guy could tell a story. Though he, through it, he could still see the elk quietly grazing. Uh-huh. And stranger still, he said, the mountain was not only a pure glass, but was a perfect telescopic lens. And whereas the elk seemed but a few hundred yards off, it was in reality 25 miles away. Really? <laughs> Uh, I just thought that was he a great story. He could embellish a story. To tell the greenhorns. Yeah. So, anyway, when some engineer wanted to know the elevation above sea level where he stood, Jim advised him to bore down until salt water was reached and then measure the distance. And then on the Great Salt Lake, Jim declared that in the winter of 1830, it snowed for 70 days. Now, this may be a little tall tale, too, but yeah. he said all the buffalo caught in the storm died, but their bodies were perfectly preserved in the snow. So he says, when spring came, all I had to do was to tumble them into the Salt Lake, and I had pickled buffalo enough for myself and the whole Ute nation for years. You said that was a little embellishment? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Quite a guy. Yeah. Uh, But the trip to Utah was not uneventful. On the last Sunday in June 1862 was a bright and peaceful day. Our men were cleaning up their arms, saddles, and equipment. Quite a number of our best shots had gone off into the hills hunting. There were no thought of Indians, for no Indians had been seen for many days. Well, late in the afternoon, a guy came riding up uh, real fast on his horse. He said, Indians, Indians. So the men uh, reported that uh, that a couple of guys had been killed uh, at a wagon train not okay. too far away. Yeah. So Jim Bridger and 20 men were ordered to proceed at once to where this happened. And uh, Jim Bridger said was to go along. And he said, we learned from the strange man uh, t- talking about Bridger as we wrote along that his wagon train, or th- no, the other guy that came up. Uh, I've really got you confused now, don't I? I I'm not even <laughs> in the same office with you anymore. Okay. We're headed toward the wagon train that got attacked. We're going to start over. We're going to start over. Okay. And Jim Bridger was with him. I got you. And a guy was telling the story. He said there Look were out. 12 or 15 wagons had been straggling along the trail in a single line. And when the rear wagon was far behind and out of sight, a war party of Indians had suddenly swooped down, killed both men, and run off the horses. I got you. All right. Now, he said, I was riding with Bridger and came upon the wagon that had been attacked, uh, and they found the bodies of the two men about 100 yards from the wagon, and they came to the first body of one older gentleman, and Bridger calmly dismounted, knelt on the ground, and closely examined the footprints around the body. Then he pulled three arrows, closely examined them, Arapahoes and Cheyennes, he said. And he could tell the tribe by okay. their arrows. All right. So leaving the first body, he went they up to... They bought them at Sportsman's Warehouse. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Good, way, good arrows. Leaving the first body, he went up to the wagon and found pieces of the harness that was cut with knives uh, scattered about. And the Indians had got the harness off the horses by cutting nearly every strap. And at one side lay the body of a young man, firmly clutching in his hand a... Colt 45. I see. With four of the chambers empty. I see. So we know that he got off four shots. Yeah. So as soon as Bridger saw the pistol, he walked around the wagon in a circle, carefully examining the grass and the sagebrush. Suddenly he stooped and seized the pieces of sagebrush and broke it off. On it was a speck of blood. Uh-huh. He found this. Really? Widening his search, he soon found more blood and came back saying, well, he said the boy got off some shots and he got somebody or, or more. Uh, with his, what he shot. But anyway, he, under Bridger's uh, guidance, uh, they hunted for the trail of the Indians. Bridger said that they were about 20 in number and were by this time far gone, safe from capture. Uh, they picked a force of 15 cavalry men to go after them, but uh, it was they could never overtake the Indians, which Bridger had already told them that. 
So, so that's just a, so one of the stories about Jim Bridger. That you know, do another one next week, Doc, on Jim Bridger. You know, there's one where he got shot in the back with an arrow. Is it a true story? A true story. Yeah. And I'll tell you about the arrow okay. that he carried in the back in his back. Oh my! For a number of years. Yeah. Tough guy. He was. Uh, yeah. You know, and it, one thing, if you really go back and listen to the story of April uh, 29th, 2014. One of his greatest regrets was leaving uh, Hugh Glass. Really? I mean, he vowed that never, ever again would he ever leave somebody like he did. And that was the mountain man, of course, which was the uh, derivation of the Revenant that is out now. Yes. Okay, a lot of Hollywood. Yes. So go back and listen to that one. Okay. You did it again. Good job, Doctor. Thank you, Zeb. It's a fun story. Enjoy having you back again this week, and we'll look forward to next week. Are we going to do another story? on Jim Bridger? You know, I've got some more that probably would be interesting. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, we'll look forward to it. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. History, brought to you by Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport. Zach and the rest of the crew, 878-2091. You stop in or give them a call today. Really good folks. Carpet and lumber and all the Tartar Farm and Ranch gates and panels, everything, western windows at Minicasha Sales. Dr. See you next week. Thank you very you have much. Have a good day, Zach. All right, sir. God bless. Hey, don't forget, too, that every Thursday we have a segment on our program called School Days in Cache County. And we certainly appreciate two wonderful sponsors of that segment, A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. And right now, don't forget, 40 to 50% off on winter items like clothes and hats and coats. And, oh, my goodness, they got all the toys and the games and the puzzles. Great place for grandparents and parents to shop for the little ones. You better believe it. A Child's World, 1308 Overland in Burley. Also Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley for all your outpatient surgeries such as cataract eye surgery, colonoscopies, many, many more. They can save you money. 677-8888. 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley, Ambulatory Surgery Center, along with the Child's World, bringing you school days in Cassia County. We're going to take a little break right now and be right back with more Zeb at the Ranch. You stay tuned. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now... Here is uh, thank you very much, and away we go. The last segment on our program for this morning. Look at that blue sky out there. My goodness sakes, I'm getting spoiled. A wonderful, wonderful day. Good morning, everybody. Right now, we're going to go to the phone lines, and I have never, I don't believe I have met this young lady, but we're going to be talking about CASA, the Court-Appointed Special Advocate for Children's Program. And we have with us on the phone, Tana Barton, and good morning, Tana. How are you? I'm great, Zev. Good morning. How are you? Now, correct me. I'm not above reproach on this. Did I say your name correct or incorrect? Is it Tana or Tana? It is Tana. Ah, okay. All right. Now, tell us a little bit about CASA. What does it mean and what does it do? I, I love to. We are the Court Appointed Special Advocates. That's um, what the acronym CASA means. We, as a program, go out and recruit, train, and then support individuals within our communities to advocate for the best interests of children that are involved in the Child Protection Act. Now, when you say that, boy, I mean, uh, I'm, I've really got a lot of questions on this this morning. You go out and you recruit volunteers. Now, I guess, how do you know if they're qualified? How do you know if they'll be able to do the job? Uh, what kind of circumstances are they put in? Give us a complete explanation on this. You know, we we have a pretty stringent um, process in which we screen our volunteers the first thing is that they have to re, um, go through an interview with myself. From there, they fill out an application, and we do a background check as far as an NCIC background check. We do a, a sex offender registry background check, as well as a check with the Department of Health and Welfare to see that they've never themselves been involved with the system. We then um, go through a few more screening processes as, few, as far as interviewing them, 
And then through training, we really use data time to screen them. They um, go through quite a lengthy treatment um, training. There's 30 hours actual seat time. Um, there's a lot of investigating and research on the Internet as well as through a manual. And from that, we then ask them to attend courts in order to kind of put it all together and see, see the whole thing in, in, in the system, how it all works together. It kind of starts to make sense to them when they go to court for the first time. All right, now After they've completed that, they've completed the background check, then they're put with a staff person who helps guide them through and mentors them for that first year or their first case. Um, they meet with them periodically to talk about where to go next. Because we ask, and, and the statute that's written into Idaho's statute asks that they go out and independently investigate the situation that brought a child into the Child Protection Act. Okay. So a child that has had the health and welfare come to their home, um, they've been declared in imminent danger by a police officer, are removed, put into foster care. The judge then tasks our volunteers to go out and independently investigate what brought this kiddo to this situation and to get to learn and know about this child. Um, talk to teachers, talk to neighbors, talk to law enforcement, social workers, talk to everybody to kind of get a really good idea and a view of what is in this child's best interest. What is, what is, is this child's needs? Because now when this, this child gets involved in the system, they no longer have the parent as their guardian. The state of Idaho is their guardian. Okay. Now, and so we are taking that information and compiling it into a court report that we submit back to a judge. And from that report and, and a, the report of the Department of Health and Welfare and testimony from the attorneys and parties involved, he's able to make a better sound decision into what is best for this children. Okay, now let me give you a couple of scenarios and tell me if I'm correct in my assumptions. These children, hold on just a second, Todd, I've got a terrible cold. Okay. <coughs> Pardon my cough, I apologize for That's that. all right. But uh, these children that are living in circumstances and environments that are not exactly up to par, whether it might be with an abusive parent or whatever the case might be, uh, are referred to the courts, and then the court appoints a special advocate for the children to monitor the children and make sure that they're safe in the home, or is this out of the home? Explain that just a little bit more. Yeah, it can be either one. It can be, and sometimes children are left in the home if the um, if safety measures are put into place. Um, sometimes that means that the offender has left the home and the child can stay there. Um, many times that that's the case. We all feel like the best place for a child is in the home, so we try to do that. But many times it means that they've gone into foster care and they've gone to a new home, sometimes a new school, and we're in, we're in there seeing that their needs are being met outside of the home as well. Let me ask you this, and I'm not trying to submit any uh, negativity to this or have any fear factors, but it would appear to me that with these child advocates going into the home, that could be a little bit uh, electric between the parents and the special advocate. Are they, is everybody protected in this situation? We are. Um, first and foremost, we're protected um, with immunity under the statute. But we also, um, as a, a executive director of this program for the past eight years, we've had very few cases where we felt like anybody was in danger. Okay. Typically, when you go to a parent and you say, hey, I'm here, I'm here to represent your child's best interest, it seems to soften it and you see the wall come down a bit. We're not the person or the agency that removed the child from the home. And so out of the gate, typically, we don't have that animosity that you may see um, parents have initially with the Department of Health and Welfare. What are some of the circumstances, Tana, that would merit the involvement of CASA? Well, give us some background as to where you folks literally are invited in the door. When a child has been removed from the home, and that can be for a variety of, of situations, it could be because of neglect. Typically, and honestly, a lot of our cases are neglect. 
our unstable home environment, and most of them are drug-related. Mom and dad are using drugs, they um, have a disease, and they are caught up in it, and they are unable to care for the kids. They're not getting the proper, me proper medical care, possibly not getting them up and getting them to school on time. Sometimes the house itself has deplorable conditions. Um, you wouldn't want to have your dog in some homes that mm. children are removed from. And these children um, become, they become a part of this system that um, is pretty, um, pretty daunting. Uh -huh. So when they, when they come into the system, the prosecutor will then uh, file the case with the court, and the judge himself signs that order appointing a CASA volunteer or the guardian ad litem program. And from there on, we take the case. Let me ask you, on a percentage basis, and maybe this is an unfair question, I don't know, but on a percentage basis, when you go to these various homes as a court-appointed special advocate for children, uh, how many lose their children to a foster home, or how many clean up their act and start really acting like responsible parents? You know... Most of them do. I can tell you in our district, in the 5th Judicial District, um, we had last year in 2015, we had 166 cases closed. So of those 166 children, and the only reason a case will close is because the court, the Department of Health and Welfare, and us as the CASA program feel like those children are now in a safe, permanent environment. So 166 cases closed, 101 of those actually went home to their parents. So many do. Um, of those, 25 of them were adopted into homes. And then there's um, the eight children were aged out of the system, which means they turned 18 and are no longer um, fall under the purview of the Child Protection Act and they're turned loose. And then of course we have the guardianships with other family members, but, you know, many of them do. Many of them do clean up their act and get back, and they, they don't have a long time to do that. And because children shouldn't languish in foster care and because children need permanency and they should have the right to thrive in a safe environment, the court is set up to, to move along pretty quick. If a child has been in foster care 15 out of 22 months, we'll file or the Department of Health and Welfare will file for termination of those pr those parents' rights. Let me and jump. So they don't have forever to clean up their acts because that can be forever in a child's life. Well, that's exactly what I was going to ask. I mean, let's let's go under the assumption that you go into the home and it's absolutely filthy, deplorable conditions. What does that uh, CASA advocate say? You have 24 hours, you have 48 hours, you have a week, and then we're going to take the child. I mean. And what kind of parameters do you dictate to these people to let them know that you're not going to string them along? We don't, we don't take children when, as a cost of program. We are only involved once the children have been taken. I so see. once the children have been removed from the home and it becomes a legal case, that's when we as the CASA program gets involved. And so we aren't involved in the, the removal of the child. That's the Department of Health and Welfare and um, law enforcement working together. What their standards are is they call it minimum sufficient level of care. So if the parent is providing the minimum uh, to the child, they will leave the child in the home. But if there is any safety issues, if there is an immediate safety issue that if they leave that child in the home, for one minute longer, there's a really good chance this child is going to be hurt or not do well. They remove the child. Okay. And that can be, um, you know, if it's deplorable, feces on the ground, moldy food in the sink, um, no, fr no food in the fridge. It's obvious that that's probably not the best place for that child to be. All right. And that child may be removed from that situation. Okay, now if the and child... If, mom needs to clean it up. If that child is removed from the home, and I think this is an important point, is that the separation forever, or do you monitor whether or not these parents are going to clean up their act and actually start to turn into, like I said a moment ago, responsible adults? Is there a chance they can get the children back? Yes, absolutely. 
So what we typically, um, they from that point, there's a case plan developed, and it's what I refer to as their roadmap. These are the tasks, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You must complete these. And when you do, and you can show that you can demonstrate the skills um, involved in that, then you may have your children back. And it's typically uh, the Department of Health and Welfare, as well as the CASA volunteer, will go into the home and assess it and make that recommendation to the judge as to whether or not they feel like that home is now a safe home for these children to be back. Now, do you go unannounced, or do you give these people a pre-call and say, hey, we're going to stop over at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon? Actually, I think that would defeat the purpose if you gave them any advance warning, wouldn't it? It would. And the Department of Health and Welfare must let them know that they're coming. The CASA volunteer does not. We can, um, written into that order, it says... Um, the order from the judge says that we will be allowed to visit their homes and interview them and talk to them when we need to. And so many times we will do an unannounced visit because that's really when you can um, get a really good view of what's going on in that home. I would imagine, and this is why I have you on the program this morning, I know that you are looking for more volunteers to this program, CASA, the Court Appointed Special Advocacy for Children. But boy, it must take a rare individual with a great, tough personality. Tell us about the kind of person that you're looking for. You know, we are looking for some for individuals that care about children, that have the common sense and knowledge to know what's best for a child. You know, um, many of our children, some of them are sexually abused, physically abused. They need counseling. That doesn't take a rocket scientist to come up with that. Um, and those are the things that our volunteers are out there advocating for. Many of our volunteers are retired teachers. Many of them work a nine-to-five job or um, non-traditional jobs. It just depends on the individual and what they um, what they feel like they can can handle. But we do have all walks. We have um, we range across the ages as to our volunteers, and we range across the. We have retired uh, uh, attorneys. We have retired. Um, uh, FBI agents. We have a lot of, it, you know, and then we have homemakers. We have moms that are staying at home and they're not with their children, but and they are with their children, but they have, they feel like they can give more to our program and, and they're out there as well. You know, talk about giving back to your community and talk about being a an effective personality for the uh, help and aid and assistance of these children. I absolutely would put these people that are volunteers for your program on a pedestal. I mean, they should be highly respected. And they are, and I, and you know, our courts respect them, our judges respect them, and I, I agree. I think that um, the work that they're doing is selfless. It's um, a lot of times we're not thanked. You know, it's really the individuals we're working with are typically in a place in their life that they aren't going to say thank you right now, but they are. I always tell them, you know, they're on a fast track to heaven. Mm. Now, what about uh, where would they call, who would they call, and uh, what kind of a personality profile do you want to call you for volunteers? I would love to, to have anybody that cares about children and feels like they have the time to commit to our program. It's only 8 to 10 hours a month. Um, that's not a lot when you look at a child and you, you know, I, I was listening yesterday on TV and they had the ASPCA or whatever that is for the animals and and I took the word animal or and replaced it with the word child and it's exactly the same. Yeah. It's our children. Um, they need they need somebody to stand up for them and they need somebody to um, be their advocate. And you know, it's not always easy. Sometimes it's hard. But I, I need individuals that are okay with that, that can step out of their comfort zone and really stand up for a child's rights. How much training does it take, Tana, to become one of these uh, volunteers? I mean, does it take a lot of understanding and education to be able to do the job efficiently? It doesn't take a lot of... Um, I, in my opinion, no, because we provide a mentor with for you for the first year, and that really helps you um, because it is so complex. When you're working with families, and especially families from uh, with abuse and neglect involved, 
It is really complex. It's really difficult for us to sit down and teach you everything you need to do sitting in the classroom. And that's why we do the 30 hours of training as well as the mentoring beside you because some of the stuff, Seb, you just can't make up. And we are able to on-the-spot train as we go and in real-life circumstances. So no one's out there hanging by themselves, and no one is left thinking that they're responsible for this child and they're afraid they're going to make a mistake. I see. You, if you are advocating for the best interest of a child, it's, it's hard to make that mistake. Okay, now give us specifically how they can contact you and the numbers. I'm almost out of time. Uh, if they could call me, my Tana Barton, again, at our office here in Twin Falls. We cover all eight counties of the 5th Judicial District, uh, 735-1177. Okay. You know, Tana, I want you to come back on the program in the near future and let us know how the recruitment, if you will, for more volunteers is going, and we'll talk about it again. But I just wish you a lot of success, and the world needs more people like you and what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. All right. God bless. Take care. Tana Barton with the court-appointed special advocacy program for children, CASA, and uh, just a wonderful lady. That number to call her, 735-1177. We've got to get the weather in here. Wheels is chomping on the bid over there, and the weather is brought to us this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Oh, my goodness. You're taking meat into Scarrow's Meat for processing? Well, you can be very confident right to the nth degree that you're going to get the same meat right back that you took in. And they've got high, high standards for you right there at Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. We're going to take uh, right now the time to listen to Gina and the weather. Your weather forecast for this Tuesday, January 19th, and we are expecting some rain showers for today, especially this afternoon. It's going to be a little bit on the windy side out of the southeast, right around 11 miles an hour today, a high of 38. Now, the rain showers this afternoon could turn into snow showers in the evening and overnight hours with a low near 33. Tomorrow, winds picking up to about 20 miles an hour, high of 36 with an overnight low of 20. Mostly sunny and 40 for Thursday and cloudy and 42 for Friday. Yes. Today's high was 41, and the overnight low was 27. That's your weather for 7th Ranch. Oh, she does a great job. Thank you very much, and so does Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the crew over at 331 North Road, Jerome, changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time at Scarrow's Meats, 324-7657. Holy cow, let's take a look real quick at what we've got cooking for tomorrow. Um, we're going to have Dave Beagle on the air from Indianapolis, Indiana. And then we're going to have Jack Euler on the air talking about how now the wolf problem with the reintroduction of the killer carnivores is going into other states and what their reaction is. And then we're going to have a gentleman that's been on my program many, many times in the past. And he is a Ph.D., Dr. Gerard Lomero. And he's going to be talking about his new book called Great News in America, Great News for America. The Constitution, Freedom, and Prosperity are coming back, he says. And uh, we're going to talk to him about this. And he's been underwritten on this book by Dick Morris and uh, many, many others. And so I'm looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, my copy from him, a signed copy, just came in the mail not more than five minutes ago. Deanne just walked in and set it on my desk. So I'm really looking forward to having Dr. Lomero on the program tomorrow. While I have just a moment, I also want to remind you about your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations and they've got all the traction tires, all the different tread designs, the studded tires, etc. Each and every person that works at Les Schwab, I think they've been to a complete course in tireology. They know all about tires. They know what's going to best befit your driving needs. So you stop in and check it out today at all seven locations. And along with that, they've got the best in brake service, professionally trained technicians, premium quality parts, front end alignment, shocks and struts, and the best in batteries. My goodness sakes, you betcha, they can help. With Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, John on Poline in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley. The 
best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Wow. What a day. Don't forget to, I want to mention one more time, the home of Jim Coleman and his family was destroyed in fire, and they need clothing, they need furniture, they need cash donations to get back on their feet. And please go to the City of Hazleton Facebook page, and they will tell you all that they need. And they're going to have a big uh, dinner over at the Snug Spaghetti Dinner this Saturday from 4 to 8 p.m., and all the proceeds go to the family. So there you go. Uh, by the way, you're listening to Zeb at the Ranch. Make sure you're hearing everything. Contact Mount Harrison Audiology for a hearing screening. All you have to do is call them at 312-0957 for an appointment today. Whew, the way things were are the way things ought to be. We talked about that quite a bit this morning. Be proud as an American and really let that sense of pride filter on down to your kids and your grandkids. Let's try to restore some of the values here in America. Until tomorrow morning, we'll ride the horse for three hours. We'll start at 8.06 and go to 11 right here on KBAR, 12.30 a.m., and then streaming live all over the world on ZebBell.com. God bless you and your family. Wheels, take it away, buddy. It's all yours.